Great. And I want to start out by just talking to everybody for a moment about we're in an Angular conference and this is an Angular world. So we have to think about what are we doing with our Angular technology? And it's not just the problem we're in. So I want everybody to step back for a minute and think about what we've been doing for the many years for uh, a lot of us. And I'll share my screen here so you can kind of get a sense for where I'm going. So the title of my talk is Less Angular is More Angular. And my name is John Papa, and uh, some of you may know me from ngconf or other places on the web. If you can fi find me afterwards up on Twitter, if you'd like to have more of a conversation about this, because I hope to get you asking more questions than getting answers during this talk. During today's keynote, we heard some great new things. And the theme of today was pretty interesting. I don't know about you, but here's what I picked out. I picked out that inline SAS is coming into our components. That was a key attribute there. And it's unlocking new things, as well as optional NG modules are on their way. What will that mean for our future development? Optional zones, that'd be great too. And also, don't forget ESLint being used instead of TSLint. There was also the protractor announcement too. So what do these things mean? If we see the forest for the trees, we look back at many years of Angular development, 12 different versions, right? We've all been through a lot of changes through this and things have grown. What's really been happening? Let's go back in the time machine and think about Angular when we first started years ago with this. The product had a different environment. It was really the king of the hill. There were no other major competitors uh, other than jQuery, which is still huge, out there for this web framework world. And the browser was very different. The ecosystem was different. TypeScript didn't exist early on. So a lot of things had to be baked into Angular back then to really make things more productive. And then the web got better. So what might our future look like knowing what some of the things are coming already? I'm here to talk to you about a couple things. We're gonna take a look at three pieces of Angular that I think you might wanna consider. So I flip out of our demo here. What you're going to see is two applications, left hand and right hand. On the one side, you'll see an application that says MFC. And on the right hand, you'll see one that says SFC. These stand for multi-file components versus single file components. I've written the same application with both styles. Now, just to keep the color codes the same, the red here is the multi and the purple is the single file. The first thing you might notice is that in Angular, we always had this multi-file component. Let's zoom in for a moment on this. Here we can see all of our components on the left, and you can see there's a folder for every component. We have our HTML, TypeScript, and CSS or SAS split out. Also tests if you want those. Well, we can do that, and that worked for a while, but why did we do that? Originally, a lot of these things came up to a couple of reasons, and here's two that I hear the most. One is separation of concerns. Well, let me tell you something. Angular's opinionated, so am I. Separation of concerns does not mean separation of files. It doesn't. The concerns are not the files. The second thing we hear the most about, though, and this is true, is back when Angular was created, the tooling really couldn't support having HTML and SAS and TypeScript or JavaScript in the same file. Today, we can. And because of that, frameworks like React and Vue and Svelte have all taken advantage of that, and they have single file components. So if we take a look now at the same application side by side, first thing you'll notice is in this components folder on the left, you can see it's taking up the entire Explorer tree just for the components. On the right, it's only taking up about two inches worth on my screen. It's about a quarter of the size. I went from 15 components and 45 files down to 15 components. But you're saying, what's the big deal? I can jump around. Have you ever been inside of one of these files and you're like, oh, I'm inside of this auth failed component over here. And the auth failed component isn't really, uh, it's not really doing much, but I wanna look at different pieces of it. So then I have to jump over to the HTML. Oh, and where's that ng model being used? I gotta jump back over to my TypeScript. And yeah, we can do that and it works, but it's context switching. So it would be better is just to stay in the same context. So in single file components, we put the whole thing in line and we still get full support for IntelliSense and the language service features. So I go to a heroes component here and let's jump down to see something like our heroes. If I come into here, you can see I get full IntelliSense just like I do inside of an HTML file. Same thing happens for my uh, CSS. And now the inline SAS is coming, we can also bake that into here as well. 
So a lot of things are really opening up the doors and it's not just less files, it's keeping my focus in one file for so not jumping around. And it also helps me see all my code in one place. And if I want to, I can minimize and do other things inside the tooling. But for me, this has been a big, big efficiency that I've been using. And I'm super excited that SAS is coming to it as well. Well, number two, how many of you out there use data in your apps? I know I do in every app I have. So HTTP client is awesome. Now, again, why do we use HTTP client? Back when Angular was created, there was no great fetch API in the, in the browser. We couldn't really rely on this everywhere. Well, now fast forward and we have that. So why aren't we using fetch instead of HTTP client? You might think, well, it just comes with it, it's easier. Well, think about React, Vue, and Svelte again. What are they using? Or other web frameworks, or Java, uh, just plain JavaScript. They're using the fetch APIs. And if they need something more complex and involved, they can use things like Axios. So let's take a look at our application and we'll jump over to see what that might look like. So here's an Angular service called the Hero Service. And you'll notice I'm pulling in Axios and I wrote a function called get heroes. And that get heroes function calls Axios with an async await using promises to get my data back. Very simple code, very easy to use. But notice what you're not seeing as well. It's not just HTTP switched out for Axios in this case, or fetch. Notice what you're not seeing. I'll give you a moment. Where's the observables? Where's RxJS? Where is that piece? Now, RxJS is extremely powerful and valuable, but do you ever just get weighed down when you're getting into a technology and thinking, I don't really need this yet. I don't really need to graduate to learning all these concepts. Well, with this, you don't have to. With Fetch and Axios, you can jump right to promises. So let me ask you another thing we could get to. Number three, do you notice anything else about this that's missing in this file? It's called hero service. That's a hint. Where's the class? This code has no class, pun intended. So there's no class up here. You're just a bunch of functions. How does that work? There's no providers. There's no dependency injection. There's no services. When you teach Angular, we teach all these concepts, but do we always need a formal class? Do we always need the decorators? Do we always need dependency injection? Sometimes we just want a function or a const or a let or a var, and that's okay. That's standard JavaScript, and we should support that, right? And guess what? It all just works. It all just works. So I flip back over to my presentation here. A couple of considerations that I brought to you today. One is think about using single file components and what that would mean. Sam Julian, great speaker here at ng-conf, has got some great articles and videos on how to do this today. And inline SAS is going to help us. And consider using fetch for basic HTTP. Why go to Axios? If you're going to do something like interceptors, you can jump right to that. Catch my talk tomorrow for more about interceptors as well. And last on this, JavaScript and TypeScript modules just work across the board. Think about using those perhaps instead of using a service in some cases. So concepts in Angular, you think about the learner coming in. We have to learn components, absolutely. NG modules, HTTP client, RxJS, services, dependency injection, decorators. Based on what I was talking about today, they just have to learn components in JavaScript. And that's it. Think about the concept count and how things can weigh you down. So I hope that you check this out and I hope I left you with some more questions than answers today. And think about where could we go? What if Angular didn't have some of these things, but still was just as feature rich and robust and lets you really unlock your potential? So less Angular is more. Check it out here in my GitHub demo. Thanks for your time, everybody. Okay.